How to Change, Part 1. Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. This is where we turn those nasty, negative thoughts into positive and work toward a happy, fulfilled life. Now, let's get started. Hello and welcome and thank you as always for joining me here on The Hopefulist. So happy to have you along. Has anybody been watching football? Been really getting some good football games. Wow. Only a couple weeks in, but I got to tell you, really enjoying the football season so far this fall. You know, fall's always been one of those times where it's kind of like a double-edged sword. I love football. My favorite sport. I am diehard. I do everything I can to watch the game. It's usually not a problem. The only time it's a problem is it's a night game. I'm a bit of an early bird. You probably know that. So, uh, But I've already had to stay up for one Monday night game to watch my Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, they did indeed win that game. So that was worth staying up for. Um, but yeah, I love me some Sunday football. But I also, you know, the bad part is that means summer's over. But I got to tell you, the weather, uh, we got some real chilly weather over the weekend. And it wasn't awful. It wasn't terrible. I mean, it it's going to get colder for sure. But then it's chilly in the morning, but then it gets nice in the afternoon. You know, it's it's just not too hot. It's not as cold as it was. So it's just a nice, perfect temperature. So I'm embracing it. We've talked about this before. I'm embracing the now and just enjoying it. And that's what I hope you do as well. The quote of the day today, we all have seeds of unthinkable badassery inside of us. Yet only some of us will allow ourselves to grow. Which leads me to a five-part series I will be doing. That's right, five-part series. Something I've never done before. We are going to talk about how to make change in your life. How you go about changing whatever it is that you want to change. There are steps that you need to take. And that's what we're going to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about awareness. Of course, because that's the first part. That makes sense, right? I did want to read you a little bit of an article I found. I thought it was pretty interesting. It's from a website called skillsyouneed.com. And it talks about becoming aware of your internal dialogue. Now, they say that your internal dialogue, well, you know, it's just your thoughts. It's the little voice in your head that comments on your life, whether that's what's going on around you or what you are thinking consciously or subconsciously. I think so many of us operate on a subconscious level, and that's why we do things, and yet we don't understand why we do them. All of us have this internal dialogue, and it runs all the time. Some of us, however, may pay more attention to it than others and be more skilled at manipulating it. It is the way in which you apply logic to what is happening, although the logic may sometimes be skewed or driven by your emotions or experiences. Growing up, I didn't have a lot of self-introspection, which led me to being a young adult with no self-introspection. I really never thought about things when it came to myself, the thoughts that I had, why I did the things that I did, and so on. The first time I entered therapy in my life, I was about 30 years old. And I remember the therapist asking me on the first day, well, how would you describe yourself? I don't know. (laughs) I literally couldn't come up with any words to describe myself because it's not something I ever thought about. I just wasn't self-introspective at all. Now, the importance of this internal dialogue, it's what makes us human and 
particularly gives us the ability to reason and think about situations. But what you think and the language you use can affect your mood, self-confidence, and self-esteem. Your internal dialogue can be both helpful and unhelpful. For example, if you are inclined to be anxious, your internal dialogue can reinforce this. Some commentators suggest that anxiety can also upset your internal dialogue, creating a vicious cycle. Just as smiling makes you feel happy, being exposed to negative language and unhappy thoughts can have an effect on your mood. This includes in your internal dialogue. If it tends toward beating yourself up, do you any, know anybody who beats themselves up? Yeah, me too. Being able to have a positive internal dialogue and look on the bright side can help you feel more positive and improve your mood. All of this combines to suggest that learning to manage your internal dialogue is likely to be important for both mental well-being and potentially success in life. So before you can manage your internal dialogue, you first need to become aware of it. Some of us are very aware of our internal dialogue as a constant presence in our brain or even as an ongoing conversation. Others are much less so. That, that was me. It's harder to tune in. One way to become aware of it is to try doing some meditation because this helps you to concentrate on your thoughts. Now, I was somebody who was very anti-meditation for the longest time, but I'm kind of going away, uh, going about it in a different way where I was at an event that long ago and there was somebody there doing some meditation. And one of the things that she had said was to put your hand on your opposite shoulder, almost like you are giving yourself a hug. Do that right now if you can, if you're not driving. And, and as I did that, I thought, gosh, you know what? This feels really good. I feel like I'm embracing myself. I feel like I'm giving myself a hug. And it just felt nice. So I started doing that when I meditated. And when I meditate, which I only do for about five minutes a day, and I don't do it every day, I'm trying to get better at it, is I try to put a word into my head as I breathe in and put a word out as I breathe out. For example, when I was getting ready for a speech that I was doing in, in front of quite a, a number of people, I breathed out, I breathed in, excuse me, calm. I wanted to breathe the calm into my body and I wanted to breathe out knowledge to the audience. Now you can do this with anything you want in your life. What you do is you pick a word that you want to be. Something that you want to be. Calm. Confident. Self-assured. Wealthy. Whatever that may be. And then you breathe out how you're going to get there. You're going to breathe out something that you want more of in the world. Oftentimes, I will breathe in the word calm or peace and breathe out kindness. I want to see more kindness in the world. I want to be more kind in the world. Are you following me? Some of the things that I do. Another technique recommended by some people is to constantly think, I wonder what my next thought will be. Whether this disrupts your internal dialogue or just distracts your brain, it seems to give some space for the brain to become aware of what is happening. What you are chiefly trying to become aware of is the types of thoughts you tend towards, including where your internal dialogue goes if you let it wander. This can give you a good idea of what is bothering you at any given time. 
whether you tend to think positively or negatively, your dominant time orientation, be it your past, present, or future, and your motivation, whether you tend to think about wanting more good things or fewer bad ones, or whether you spend time trying to understand how things relate to each other. So thought some of those tips were were pretty good. Um, if you are not aware, I am doing a self-talk overhaul. It's going to be starting on Monday, October 10th. It is three days of a challenge, completely free, to start changing that internal dialogue. We're going to change the way we talk to ourselves, the way we think about ourselves, and in essence, that will change the way we perceive perceive ourselves and present ourselves to the world. Go to hopefulist.com slash subscribe to sign up for that. Completely free. You've got plenty of notice. Please sign up. I am so excited about this free challenge. So part one on how to change. If you want to make changes in your life, this is how you do it. Step one, awareness. Awareness. You have to be aware of why you do what you do. So the best thing to do is to journal. Journal to discover the reasons you are the way you are. Now, if you like who you are, then you're good to go. But if you don't, delve into what it is that you don't like and how it is that you became that way. For example... I'm a very reactive person. I'm not as bad as I used to be. I'm much better. I'm not perfect. It still happens from time to time. But for the longest time, I was extremely reactive. And I didn't even attempt to stop myself. One, because as I mentioned, I wasn't a, an introspective person. But since I didn't know why or care to even explore why I was like that, I just kept exploding all the time. One of the reasons that I've been like that for a long time is because I felt like I didn't get a lot of respect when I was growing up. I think that a lot of kids of my generation felt that. They didn't get a lot of respect from their parents. Uh, We were told to sit down, shut up. Uh, spoke, speak when spoken to, kids are to be seen, not heard, that kind of thing. And it's just something that has always, I guess, not sat well with me. Another issue for me, I think, is the fact that I have worked in a male-dominated field my entire career, and I have seen the men get treated better than me. Um, make more money than me, and it is very unfair, and it would make me angry. And so now, whenever I get into a situation when I feel like I'm being disrespected or treated unfairly, I lash out. And it kind of makes sense when you put it together like that. So now that I know that is the reason that I lash out so much, I can work to change that. And I have. And I've gotten a lot better. Perfect. Not even close. But it's a work in progress. We're working on progress, not perfection. That's what it's about. Number two, you need to know your values. What is important to you? Do you value truth, respect, like I was just talking about, having fun, um, being ambitious? Figure out what your values are. What is it that is important to you? I 
I want to be authentic. I want to be real with you guys. I want to be honest. I want to be fun. I want to be inspiring. So these are some of my values. I cannot stand dishonesty, liars, people that either lie intentionally or unintentionally. So I'm going to make sure that I never do that. And as much as possible, I'm going to stay away from people who do that. I'm going to be around people who give each other respect. I want to be around people that I want to be like. I want to be around real, authentic, fun, inspiring people. People with open minds that want to learn more about the world and therefore their place in it. I'm feeling very philosophical today. So you have to find out what it is that is most important to you and then make sure that you are living it, right? You want to be around the type of people that you want to be like and you want to distance yourself from people that have qualities that you don't like. So... The third thing that you need to do is you need to recognize what you are doing that is not in line with the person that you see yourself as. If you want to have a value of being honest and respectful, then gossiping about other people is probably not going to line up with that because it's disrespectful. So you want to steer clear of that. You need to recognize what you're doing that will totally be the flip side of that. That if you want to be honest and respectful, then... You need to live in a way that is honest and respectful. And when you're not, you need to call yourself out on it. Another easier example. You say you want to get healthy. You say that you want to lose some weight, be in better shape. You want to eat food that is good for you yet you're still eating junk food and never getting up off the couch once you get home from work. You're not lining up with what you're saying. If you want to live a healthier life, you have to live a healthy lifestyle. You can't just say, I want to lose weight and expect it to just fall off. No, you have to do something to make that happen. And it's the same thing with any of the values that you have discovered from what we talked about earlier. Live your values. Stay in line with your values. That's how it's done. It's not easy. Simple, but not easy. We all know what it takes Now we got to do it. So that is part one of how we can change. And once we change, we can start living the life that we have always dreamed of, of the life that we've always desired. And that is the point of all of this, is to live a better life, to live life to the fullest. And like I said, Four more parts are coming up, so I'm excited to continue with the next four parts. Let me know how you felt about part one. Are you looking forward to part two? Let me know. Shoot me a message. Tell me what you thought. And if you like today's episode, please 
Make sure you are following the podcast. Subscribe or follow. Hit the like button and share it with your friends. Share it with anybody you think could benefit from how to change as well. So it is the start of a brand new week, depending on when you're listening to this, of course. And I want you to go out there and kick butt this week. I know you are a badass. Thank you for listening to The Hopefulist. Now, don't you feel good? Make sure you come back next week. See you then.